sticking your nose in places it shouldn't be. I just went out for a walk, lady! <laughs> It's Jessica and welcome back to Chess of Blades. So we're gonna continue where we left off and that's in our room But Franz is watching over us and it's not that I don't think he's like a bad guy or anything or good guy or whatever It's just that we don't know who exactly who he is and I'm assuming he's like Secretly part of the cult people because like the occult member because he knows something that he shouldn't know But he does know anyway, like how does he know that someone's gonna get murdered or whatever? So I I'm I'm confused about that part That is why I 100% don't trust Franz right now as much as I love him. I don't trust him right now. So let's continue Ugh. I rolled over hazily under my covers Are those birds I hear outside? Ugh. Hey, it's morning. We're not dead Reluctantly, I pull my head out of the sheets like a bear emerging from hibernation. Gentle sunlight streams through the window, suggesting that morning has finally arrived. Franz? After rubbing my eyes, I glance around the room curiously. No one's here. It wasn't just a dream, right? Did he leave? Then my gaze falls upon a piece of paper lying at the foot of the bed. I reach out and pick it up, squinting at the casually scrawled words. Don't go anywhere, kitten. Oh, really? You can go gag on a pile of cocks. <laughs> you complete bastard. <laughs> I crumple up the note and toss it towards the wall. He really thinks I'm just going to wait around for him during the day? Well, he's wrong. It's broad daylight out, and I can handle myself well enough. I don't need him to be my babysitter. Grumbling irritatedly under my breath, I slip out of bed and set the groom set about grooming and redressing myself, trying to process the events of the previous day in the meanwhile. So one of the ambassadors was assassinated, huh? How on earth are they gonna keep that secret from the guests? And what about the other ambassadors? I wonder if this is Lenaise's job to deal with. I mean technically yes, he's Inquisitor, right? So he gave me he did give me that strange look last night. Is it possible he caught onto what Franz was doing? This is all too much of a mess for me. Oh uh, no, I feel like something's bad something bad's gonna happen since we leave the room, but I feel like Franz already expects us to like leave the room and not stay in there. Muttering to myself, I leave my room and head out into the hallway. The sound of chattering voices echo up and down from downstairs, making me feel more at ease. I seriously doubt it can be that dangerous during the day. More assass Most assassins wouldn't risk publicly attacking a target, especially not in an isolated castle like this, nowhere really to run. Heading down the corridor, I turn the corner with humming while humming softly, keeping an eye out all the while. What? Is that- a woman lying on the ground? What the fuck? Is there someone else dead? She looks unconscious. What on earth happened to her? I hurry over, quickly kneeling down beside her. She seemed to be an older woman dressed in an exquisite finery, and... Why does she look so strangely familiar? Uh... She groans, her eyes str struggling to open. Now she looks even more familiar. Wait, hold on a second. She can't be... Eh? Riven? Is that you? Who is this woman? Whoa! Damn, she is fancy looking. Sounding just as in disbelief as I am, she pushed herself into a sitting position and started staring back at me in shock. <laughs> it's his aunt! Aunt Valora, I wasn't expecting to see you here. Especially not, you know, on the ground. Your mother didn't mention a word about you coming to the celebration. I can't believe it. I let out a uh, slightly nervous laugh. This is not really a surprise considering Mother and Valora aren't exactly the best speaking parents, even though they're sisters. More importantly, why are you on the floor? Did something happen? I have Valora up into her feet, and she dusts herself off with a disgruntled huff, turning her sharp gaze onto me. Truth be told, I'm not completely sure. One moment I was on my feet, the next I was here on the ground. I think someone snuck up on me when I was leaving my room. But why were they snuck up on this lady? You're saying someone attacked you? When she nods it irritably in agreement, I beat- I feel the beats of cold sweat break out in the back of my neck. So much for my theory of I'm completely safe in broad daylight. I don't appear to be missing anything, so I'm quite baffled as to what their motive was. Regardless, I was on my way to the Inquisitor's chambers to be briefed on something that apparently happened last night. My vacation has been ruined already, it seems. So I'm assuming whoever is doing the killing, if it is the same cult people or whatever, they know that this is Rivian's relative. Like, eh. 
Haha, <laughs> that's right. You're the king's main advisor. Oh shit! Actually, never mind. She's an advisor too? Oh fuck. You're the king's main advisor on the foreign affairs, aren't you? Yes, but if it weren't for the prestige and pay, you'd sooner catch me cleaning chamber pots than in this job. Tensions between us and our neighbors are at all time highs and things are only getting worse. I tense slightly at her words. If she doesn't know about the ambassador's death yet, well, let's just say I don't want to be around when she finds out. Although, why wasn't she immediately informed last night? It seems like something that King's foreign advisor would need to know as soon as possible. Was it just a negligence, or did they just want to get, or did you just want to get further into the investigation first? Deciding to spill uh, the beans a little, I clear my throat with an awkward smile. Uh, well, regarding last night's incident, it was a murder, actually. Yours truly happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. I almost got detained as a suspect. Valora's eyes widen, her lips parting as she inhales a gasp. A murder? Oh, well, that's just delightful, isn't it? How did you get caught up in it? Sticking your nose in places it shouldn't be. I just went out for a walk, lady! <laughs> what the hell? She squints at me a little suspiciously, and I can't help but shrink back a bit. Does she really think I've been involved with this? No, no. I was just in the gardens around the same time as the murder took place nearby, you see. I didn't hear so much as a scream. It's almost disappointing, really. <laughs> you better watch yourself more carefully, you know. Being your father's son won't excuse you from everything. Uh, she thinks I, I use my father's name to wiggle out of being held as a suspect, does she? Well, she always seemed to like him a lot more than she likes mother. Maybe a little too much. Oh, okay. Uh, I think she holds him into higher esteem than she does the king himself. Speaking of your father, do give him my regards when you get back home, won't you? It's a shame how little we talk after he retired. Uh, uh, yes. I'll try to remember to let him know. I'm sure he misses you too. Actually, father absolutely despises Valora. <laughs> I feel like he's called her the slimy old witch more than a few times. Probably better not tell her about that though. Of course, of course. Well, I'll be on my way to get the details of this whole murderous affair then. And let the Inquisitor know some attacker of defenseless women is running around on the loose. Do take care, Rivian. Okay, bye! She's kind of scary. I wiggle my fingers as she passed by, watching her elegant figure until it disappears around the corner. Phew. I swear, each time I talk to Valora, she looks like she's like some sort of unruly child. She looks at me like I'm some unruly child. Maybe I remind her mother too much. Or maybe she just gives everyone who isn't father that look. Deciding in my best interest not to dilly-dally in the same spot, Valora was knocked out, I quickly head to the main hall. I make it to the stairs without any further incident, which is far more than a relief than I really ought to be. On the balcony, a few servants are drifting around with trays and light uh, delicacies and pastries, and I take a few here and there and cobble together a casual breakfast. While I eat, my thoughts drift idly back to Franz. I wonder what he left the room to go do. Find clues, maybe? Or perhaps he got another lord or lady he's trying to woo. Surely I can't be the only person he treats like that. I bet he plays around all the time and just drops the objects of his affection as soon as he gets bored. I shake my head moodily as I lean against the balcony. Well, it's not any of my business what he does. I just wish he would stop pretending like I'm special or something, like he knows me. It's damn distracting. As I silently gripe to myself while observing the well-dressed ladies and gentlemen stroll around below, a small tug comes at my sleeve. What? Who is it? A little startled, I quickly glance over to my left. Oh! To my surprise, there stands Hazel, beaming up at me brightly. Oh, hello Hazel. What mischief are you trying to get yourself into today? That's not very nice. <laughs> I just saw you come over here and wanted to give you back something you dropped. Oh, I dropped something? Her lips curled up into her pout, shoulders drooping slightly. Uh, that was rather unnecessary of me then. Sorry about that. Here, how about you take my pastries? As if I had flipped some magical switch, Hazel immediately brightens up, all but bouncing on her toes while giving me the eager nod. I hand her over a fluffy ice strudel. I was originally very excited to eat, uh, before that fit of brooding ruined my appetite. At least, Hazel at least, looks like she'll enjoy it much more than I will. She starts ha happily munching away, a bit of ice and getting on her cheeks. What about this thing I dropped though? I don't remember having anything in my pockets. Alright, here you go sir. I'm sure someone put it in your pocket while you were walking around, but it fell out. What? 
Blinking in surprise, I take the small folded piece of paper uh, off of Hazel's hands, wiping off the crumbs that fell onto it. Someone put a piece of paper in my pocket? Well, it was a little crowded back in the stairs. Maybe I just thought someone bumped into me? I unfolded it curiously, scanning over the contents. Meet me tonight alone, the storage room with the king's portrait. I have a warning for you. I'm sorry? Who is this? My heart skips a beat. There's no way. Was that the murderer? Is something wrong, sir? You look a little- No, it's okay, Hazel. It's not like I'm gonna get murdered in a closet or something. <laughs> Watching me with a concerned expression while chewing on the rest of the pastry, Hazel tilts her, tilts her head curiously. Uh, no, it's nothing. Just a bit of strange message, that's all. You didn't happen to see that person who put, my, put it in my pocket, did you? Hazel. Oh. Before Hazel can respond to my nervous question, a woman suddenly comes hurling up to the girl's side, bending down next to her with a slight gasp. She looks older than me, uh, but not quite Silas's age. The line of her forehead... However, it implies there's some sort of stress and maturity beyond her years. I told you not to eat sweets after breakfast. And what are you doing out here in the hall? The woman, whose outfit suggests she's a maid, chides Hazel softly while brushing off the icing off her cheek with one thumb. But, Mom... Quickly crumpling the paper in my hand and stuffing it in my pocket, I clear my throat and bow slightly to the maid. That would be my responsibility, miss. She helped me out a great deal by returning something to me, so I gave her a little treat as a reward. I hope it's not too troubling for you. The maid, Hazel's mother, by the sound of it, looks up at me with widening eyes, then glances back to Hazel, who nods happily. Oh, I see. That's very kind of you, sir. Little Hazel gets into trouble more often than not, but I'm glad that she's doing something helpful now and then, too. Okay, just don't punish her. <laughs> She offers me a relieved smile, although her eyes study my face up with another, slightly sharper look. Calm down, lady. It's not my fault your little girl thinks I'm her older brother. <laughs> I'm Emily, and Hazel here is my daughter. I'm very sorry if she's been bothering you at all. It's just exciting for her to be around so many people at once. I must say, it's a little overwhelming for me to- Yeah, considering she runs away a lot. I nod grimly, very much able to sympathize. Yes, there's quite a great, great deal going on here in more ways than one. I'm glad Hazel's enjoying things here, at least. Don't you like parties, sir? Oh, he doesn't. So many pretty outfits and tasty food and lovely music and the festival, too. And murderer, I add dryly in my head. Although, even without the murderer, I feel like I'd still be more than ready to go home at this point. You're quite right. Speaking of the festival, I think I'll go out and catch some fresh air. Thanks again for your help, Hazel. You're welcome, sir. Make sure it doesn't fall out of your pockets again. Yeah! Hazel giggles mischievously, entirely unaware of how ominous a message she brought to me. Oh, uh, by the way, do you know where I might find the storage rooms? I, uh, just thought I'd pass by them on my tour of the castle, you know. Not trying to be suspicious or anything, I just want to look at your brooms and your dusters. You know, storage tour. My clumsy reasoning causes Emily to tilt her head curiously at me, her eyebrows knitting a little. A moment later, though, she offers me a slight puzzled smile, nodding at her head. Yes, sir. They're on the main <laughs> She's like, why the hell does he need to go there? You'll find them if you head down the hall a little bit, I'm sure. I inwardly breathe a sigh of relief, giving the maid a grateful nod. Wait, are we going there now? I feel like this is a bad idea. We should find Franz. One day, I'll figure I'll figure my way around these social blunderings, although it might not be this day. Enjoy the rest of your morning then, sir. Come, Hazel. Let's go tidy the rooms upstairs. Yes, ma'am. Feeling slightly guilty for going out to the festival while poor Hazel stuck inside, I offer the two a wave as we head off in different directions, then trot down the main level. The note in my pocket begins uh, begging me to read this again, just to make sure I didn't mistake any of the words. However, I'm almost certain that it has been tied to the murder case somehow, which, considering how close the message delivered got to me, it's more than a little unsettling. If I can catch Hazel again, maybe I can ask her... Uh, if she saw who it was. There might be a clue there as to who the murderer's identity is, but wouldn't the actual culprit really dare to approach me if they thought I'd recognize them? It seems like an obvious trap to go meet whoever delivered the note, and yet it might be the only way for me to figure out this orchestra behind the orchestrator behind all of this.
I suppose I can put off the decision until evening. It's going to weigh on me until then, though. Until until evening? Why? We want to go in the nighttime? Like, when? Okay, uh, whatever. Signed to myself, I step through the castle door into the outside, heading towards the chattering and energetic crowd surrounding the festival stalls. The weather is unbe undeniably beautiful, and the cheerful atmosphere is enough to brighten even my sour mood. Still, to think that among this crowd there could be a murderer. That's enough to just ruin about anyone's enjoyment, I think. Ugh. How ignorant is bliss? Stopping at the crowded stall, I peer over the customer's head to glimpse the vendor's wares. Ah, oh, they're masks! That's right, I was gonna get one for the masquerade ball. He's got quite a selection. Might as well treat myself while I'm here. I wind up buying a rather overpriced but nonetheless magnificent mask. I doubt I'll be going to another masquerade anytime soon, so I might as well make it to this one. I hope I hope we actually get to the masquerade because in Arden, unfortunately, we couldn't enjoy it that much because him and Arden were fighting. Tucking the mask into my coat, I turn around and start wandering towards another stall. Suddenly, I see a familiar figure approach me quickly through the crowd. Roguish features, dark hair, a muscular build. There's no mistaking it. I instantly turn around and try to push my way through the throng of people to escape, gritting my teeth together. Is it Franz? Damn it! He's not the person I want to see right now! I thought I said not to start running around, kitten. <sighs> what am I doing? Well, it's not like you gave us a choice, dude! A hand slowly catches my wrist, and before I can try to pull away, Franz tugs me back towards him. You kindly remember, I'm not under some kind of house arrest. Besides, what are you out here for? So much for trying to figure out who the assassin was! I mutter irritatedly at Franz as he lets out a chuckle, rubbing his free hand along the side of his stubble face while shaking his head. Calm down, calm down. Let's not go saying words like assassin and crime. He has a point, we shouldn't say that. <laughs> Before you start giving me that hurtful stare, you should know I've been looking around for information. Not having a fun day playing at the festival. You could have said that instead of being like, hey, stay in your room because Rivian is not going to listen to that. But now that you're here, and I figured you'd wander out eventually, we can do some exploration together. Ah, uh, our first couple's out. <laughs> We're not dating though! <laughs> With a dreamy sigh, Franz starts to lead me through the crowd, his hand slipping down from my arm to thread his long fingers between my own. This is a defeat sweeps over me and I follow him along somewhat reluctantly. What annoys me the most though is how at ease I feel now that he's back on my side. It's not like you can really blame me, he's so tall and he has built up someone who easily wields a blade or, or win a hand-to-hand -hand combat. Well, Franz's physique isn't any of my business, but if he's so insistent on being my de facto bodyguard, it's important that he's not so flimsy. I think out of all the boys, like Arden is a, you know, a royal guard, Franz is, I don't know, he's just fit as fuck, and then we have, uh, Linnaeus, who's a stick. <laughs> Where are we going? Are you going to win me a prize at one of the booths? I glance up at him while, as we're strolling along, feeling slightly self-conscious about our conspicuous hand-holding. Even if I protest, he'll probably come up with some ridiculous excuse like, I don't want you running off again, while there are worse things to deal with, I suppose. I thought we'd go see the fights. What if our culprit is actually hiding in plain sight, and is blending in as one of the jousters or brawlers? Assassins have to be good fighters, you know. I wonder if this time around it's gonna be like sabers involved, but I hope it's different. Don't be ridiculous. He'd have to be a madman to try something like that. Now, some of the vendors, they're rather shady. Is your head screwed on properly, kitten? <laughs> what kind of vegetable peddler moonlights as an assassin? Death by rotten produce? It could be possible, though. You can't rule it out. We continue bickering about the murder's hidden identity as we walk along, our conversation turning into a contest of who can come up with the most ridiculous theory. The atmosphere is probably too far light for the uh, gravity of the situation, especially considering how grave the danger Franz led me into thinking I was in yesterday. But it's difficult to stay on edge while we stroll among the lively festival grounds, trading quips, and for the first time since I arrived in this place, I find myself surprisingly at ease. Franz too seems more relaxed than usual, aggressively lewd self, and almost and he almost looks rather innocent as he admires the wealth and exotic goods and fanciful wares on display around us. I noticed, however, that his gaze frequently flicks about, keeping a watchful eye on our surroundings. Oi, Franz, I was wondering, have you- Hold on a moment, is that the boy from yesterday? Just as I interrupt our banter to ask Franz a question, my eyes are suddenly drawn to a familiar face in the crowd. Alistair? Wasn't that his name? Oh yeah, the- the, uh, stuttering boy. Hmm? Oh, that one. I'm 
surprised old glasses still doesn't have him trapped in his room. <laughs> Who knows what ungodly things he's probably doing to the poor boy. Oh god! <laughs> I shoot Franz a flat look at his mockingly sympathetic words before glancing back over at the young man, who's slouching by one of the vendors selling, selling savory foods. He meets my gaze for a moment later and probably bolts upright as to stare at me like a startled deer. Oh, he probably thinks I have it out for him because he tangled me up in this whole mess with Elias. Well, I'm not happy about it, but it really wasn't his fault. Let's go talk to him. He might have important clues, don't you think? It's possible, if you can keep him from scampering away first. Yeah. Give him a friendly smile and wave, why don't you? That constant glare of yours doesn't excite everyone as much as it does me. <laughs> Attempting to follow Franz's advice while ignoring his comment, I awkwardly wave my fingers at Alistair. He freezes it for a moment, uh, gaping at us with a petrified expression, before, before finally raising a trembling hand to return the gesture. I decide to seize the moment and tug Franz over to Alistair's direction, approaching him a little cautiously so that he doesn't uh, decide to bolt. It's like dealing with a feral cat or something, I swear. When we get closer, I see that he's holding a half-eaten delicacy on a stick, nervously chewing what's probably some on the other half. Franz and I come to a halt a little distance away from him, and a few moments of awkward silence stretch between us. Then, clearing my throat, I attempt to fill the uncomfortable pause with the most cheerful voice I can muster. Which is to say, not very. Well, enjoying the festival, hmm? Good thing that you weren't caught up in that awful business from last night, eh? Oh god. <laughs> He winces a little when I bring up yesterday's incident. Ugh, I probably should have waited to mention that until later. On the sublime display of socialization, Rivian. Y yes, sir. T truth be told, I'm here to uh, avoid someone. Alistair swallows, his eyes dropping down to his feet. Does he mean me or something? Avoid someone? Is Sir Four Eyes stop? <laughs> sir, Sir Four Eyes. God damn it. Franz's tone sounds somewhat more direct than I was expecting, as if he was impatient with Alistair's tentative way of speaking. Wasn't he the one who told me to be more friendly? Uh, uh, no. It's my g g guardian She's going to be in a v very bad mood today. Celeste? I think. He, anxious he anxiously fiddles with the street food he's holding, looking rather unhappy. I have to say, if his meek way of speech wasn't so annoying, he'd almost be cute in a mousy sort of way. I see, I see, that's quite a shame. Well, we won't bother you too long, but I wanted to ask you a little more about last night if you don't mind. Uh, trying to work my way rather unsettledly back into the main point, I offer him an encouraging nod in an attempt to sound a little less aggressive. He shifts a bit uneasily, but doesn't seem to be completely closed off as when I first brought it up, so I decided to take up the plunge. About what you saw into the gardens, besides me, obviously, was there anyone else? People who seemed suspicious or out of the ordinary? As I watch him intently, Alistair visibly hesitates, averting his gaze for a moment. Is he hiding something? Or is he just normally anxious attitude? I can't tell. Damn it. What if, what if, like, Alistair was secretly, like, the murderer? It's possible, right? Because I'm not, I'm not saying, it, it, it's probably not, but this is just, like, a wild shot. Um... Because sometimes it's the people that you least expect, and this guy seems like he's the least suspect because he's like this young kid. Also, he's like all stuttering and nervous and whatever. But Rivian made a point to say like, how come Franz is angry at him? Like he's very irritated with him, but he told Rivian to be nice to him. That's a little bit odd considering Franz knows like, how to talk to people, right? So I figured he can read him. So maybe there's something about it. Maybe he's not the assassin. Maybe he just knows something. Well, Rivian asked you a question. See, he's so angry! Did you see someone suspicious or didn't you? Or... Oh, surely you're not protecting someone. N n no it's not like that, I swear, s sir. I r really c can't say anything. You have to believe me. Franz's accusation makes Alistair suddenly tense up, the stick of food dropping by his hands as he takes a hasty step backwards. Grinding my teeth quietly, I elbow Franz to the side, letting out a pointed cough. Mm. No, no, we're not trying to accuse you of anything, really. Can't we just have a little chat about- It w wasn't her. There's no way. S sorry, gotta go. What? 
Before I can get as much as another word, the wide-eyed Alistair turns on a heel and dashes into the crowd at top speed. I stare in disbelief at his dis diminishing figure until it disappears into the throng of people. Damn, he's surprisingly fast for someone who's so small. See what I mean? Assassins are fast. I mean, it's a slim chance that he's the assassin, but you know, you, you gotta think about it, right? So, was that really necessary? If you had been any more direct with him, he probably would have soiled, would have soiled himself on the spot. Turning to glare at Franz, I fold my arms over my chest, expecting a sheepish reaction. But instead, he just smirks slightly back at me, lifting his shoulders in an innocent shrug. Really? I thought it was quite effective. After all, he was so flustered that he practically blurted out who he was trying to protect. Uh, her, is it? Hmm, I suppose so. If you hadn't scared him off, we might have gotten a name. The fact that that girl doesn't narrow it down a whole lot, does it? Franz doesn't appear the slightest bit remorse or, remorseful or even mildly apologetic, so I decide to save my breath chastising him and just shake my head. I think not everything here is what it seems to be, kitten. L yeah, like the other Let's one. Don't forget that we're all playing parts in a much larger game. And sometimes, if you don't attack your opponent while you can, you never get the chance to again. Rather than elaborating on his statement, he instead reaches out a finger towards my neck, tracing the tip horizontally along my throat. The gesture is slow enough to be much as dangerous as it, as it is suggestive. Right now, your position is better than you think it is. After all, our enemy believes you have a clue as to who they are. We just have to use that to our advantage. The fact that Franz refers to all of this as casual as a game is more unsettling than it's reassuring. Sure, I love to go a good one on one every now and then. Not all the stakes are on my life. Is it truly what being in court is like? He acts as if it's a normal occurrence. Well, I sure up in the mood, didn't I? Don't look so pale. I like you better when you're blushing. But <laughs> Come on, let's continue. I again. still don't know who Franz is. It's so like, he ha he knows how to play the game so well. Fine, fine. Still feeling slightly sobered, I follow Franz back out into the main crowd, which seems even larger than it is around midday. Our back and forth chatters a little less lively, mostly on on my end, as we make our way towards the sandy floor arena that's encircled by a thick throng of people. Judging from the loud cheers, some kind of fight is going on currently. I've always found combat sports to be a little barbaric and rather hypocritical for nobles who's so enthralled with gentile manner. Maybe it's an outlet for their human aggression. As Franz and I push our way to the side of the ring, my eyes fall on two men taking on wide punches at each other in a sort of hand-to-hand -hand brawl. Who's that fiery redhead one? He's positively giant. Him? He's one of the king's favorites, I think. Doesn't take much to see why. He's built like a brick house. Franz pauses, causing me somewhat a sharp glance over from the corner of his eye. I hope you're not getting any funny thoughts. He's twice your size, you know. <laughs> He'd impale you from the <laughs> God damn it, you don't have to say that! How about you just shut up? My head isn't constantly filled with vulgarity, unlike someone I know. Chuckling smugly, Franz ruffles a hand through my hair, destroying the work I spent on neatly and painstakingly grooming locks. I purse my lips together and bear the indignity, indignity of it, deciding to focus on the two men beating each other up instead. Do you really believe any of these brawlers could be the assassin? They seem a little too much on the blurry side to be noticed. To not I be think noticed. You're right. That boy would have probably called out one of them as the culprit if he'd seen them going into the gardens. Yeah. It's a more obvious murderer than one with biceps the size of watermelons. Okay, for this one, I don't think it's Saber. Because, like, with the other Rue with Arden, that was very shocking because I didn't think it was him. This one, it seems too obvious that it would be someone who is a brawler. Because it's like, it's too obvious. Hey, that guy's huge. He could kill someone, like Franz is saying. I don't think it's him. Well, he thought I was a suspect. So you should take his observation with a grain of salt, you know? You're plenty suspicious. I'm sure a lot of people interpret your awkwardness as trying to hide something. Thanks! <laughs> a sour expression overtakes my face, but it's difficult to argue with Franz's point. Well, it's not my fault that I'm not used to talking to so many people. It's a bit of a social fumble. All it takes is to be thought of sh as shady? Father hates being in crowds as much as I do. Maybe he's just so bluntly direct that it comes off as straightforwardness rather than acting suspicious. 
Ugh. I'm not desperate enough to take a page out of his book yet. Maybe I'll hire an adequate tutor when I get back home. I fall into my musing and practically zone out for the rest of the fight, which continues on for a little while longer. Only when the gingered haired man squarely knocks out his opponent, opponent does the crowd erupts into cheers and is victoriously strides out of the ring with his hands raised. I could have seen that one coming. Let's ask him if he might know of anyone suspicious. Like him? <laughs> hmm? Oh, Sir Watermelon Arms? Why not, I suppose? We step our way through the throng of people which suddenly grows thinner now that there is a break between fights. The tall brawler is getting the blood wiped off his cheek by a flustered young woman, who is probably more than a little intimidated by how his hands are the size of her head. He turns to us, however, when we approach, eyeing Franz for a long moment before his gaze flicks down to me dubiously. There's something you lads be needing. I don't need to take kindly to just being gorped at. It's interesting that he has a Scottish accent, but like his real accent is English. I thought that was so. That was really good. That's a good touch. Because usually, like, the bad guys, like, you know, they don't try to hide their complete identity. I like that um, Argent Games made Saber change his accent. That's so cool. His thickly accent voice bellows out, deep and loud, enough that it seems like it could potentially shake the ground if, we were sh if he were shouting. I swallow my nervousness and attempt to come up with some sort of placating remark, but before I get a chance, Franz suddenly clears his throat. Have you seen anything out of the ordinary around the castle by chance? We're looking into a little mishap that occurred recently. I shoot him a song-like glance. He better not mess up things like he did with Alistair. I have a feeling that the results would be a lot worse with this brute too. <laughs> he just punches Franz. <laughs> And getting smashed into Rivian's uh, shape uh, bloodstain on the ground isn't on my list of plans for the day. Out of the ordinary? I have no clue what you damn nobles thinks ordinary. He pauses, scratching pondering on his cheek, a brawly grin rising on his lips soon after. Yeah, knew that you're mentioning it. I do remember seeing one in the maid scurrying around all anxious like inside the castle last evening. When I was paying a visit to her. Uh... <laughs> okay. I didn't think much of it due to be distracted, but I remember the lass had a pretty face with big brown eyes and darkish hair on her shoulders. Looked plenty nervous though. Francis' eyebrows knit together at the man's description, and he flicks his gaze thoughtfully to one side. Big brown eyes and dark hair on the shoulders. Does that sound like Hazel's mo mother? But she has pink hair, does she not? She was on the floor with the guest rooms then. Did you see if she was carrying anything? Well, I weren't staring at her aunts. But I reckon she had some sort of large cloth bundle. Something valuable, most likely. Yeah, she seemed awfully shaky for just that. The brawler raises his mountain like shoulders in a shrug. He seems to be watching us a bit curiously, or maybe suspiciously. Perhaps we shouldn't attract any more undue attention by asking people such forfeit questions. After all, we don't know who might be working against us. I see. Well, you've been very helpful, sir. Congratulations on your victory. A brisk but cordial, Franz offers a nod of thanks, to which the large fighter lets out a snort. You're speaking as if it were an even match. Oh, uh, please don't hurt us! <laughs> Can't expect you lot to know about real fighting anyways. He mutters to himself in an irritated tone and turns away from us, shaking his head despairingly. Franz, however, seems to have already moved on, and he beckons me to follow him back to the crowd. I glance between him and the dismissive brawler's back, debating on whether it's worth to try to pry any more answers out of him. But I have a feeling we outstayed our welcome, and Franz looks a little impatient. Sighing, I return to Franz's side, mulling over the new clue. A nervous feeling curls the pit in my stomach when I compa uh, compare the fighter's description to the maid of the woman I met earlier. Excuse me. Oh. A tall guard irritatedly elbow past us until I realized some embarrassment were standing in the middle of the busy path. I grab Francis's wrist to tug him a little out of the way, offering an apologetic nod to the guard as he shuffles past. What do you think about all of this then, Franz? Franz? And when immediate reply doesn't come, I inquisitively look over at the tall man, who seems to be lost in thought. His eyes are focused in the distance, toward the same direction that the annoyed guard stalked off in. I nudge aside impatiently, and he blinks for a moment before directing his emerald gaze down at me. 
Ah, did he did notice you? something? As much as it pains me, I believe I'll need to leave your side for a little. Yeah, he saw something. Can you stay out of trouble until I'm back? Fine, whatever you wish. I suppose I'll see you when I see you. His response surprises me a little. So my words come out sounding somewhat tr surely. Franz pauses, lips curling into a devilish smirk. Has parting become a sweet sorrow? You don't seem as keen on getting rid of me this time. <laughs> well, it's because we're still looking at clues, Franz. Come on. You're my just my bodyguard, you know. Don't get all swellhead. My fluster reply entices a chuckle from Franz, who lowers himself in a bow. A moment later, he slips off into the crowd. I lose sight of the broad back in a sea of people. Where is he going off to suddenly, anyway? He seems really distracted. Does some kind of idea pop in his head? I think it's the guard! I don't know. Being a little disheartened, I slowly make my way back to the castle, shoving my hands moodily into my pockets. The afternoon sun beats down on me heavily, helping to sap away my previous energy and enthusiasm. It's hard to shake a sense of frustration from having all of these pieces that don't fit together too, and having no idea who my opponent is, even though I have a sense of some moves they're making. No, more importantly, do I even have an opponent? I've only been going off of Franz's word that I'm targeted. Maybe I'm just dealing myself into some sense of danger when nothing really is there? But then there's a note Hazel gave me earlier. I forgot to ask Franz what he thought about it, but perhaps it's better I didn't. Oh god damn it, so we're going there by ourselves! He probably- it's probably related to what happened before, though I doubt it could be from the murderer. It seems too blatantly of a trap. Damn it all, this is too confusing! I gloomily push my way through the castle doors and into the main hall, intent on returning to my room in solitudes for at least a while. Social gatherings are bad enough without the deadly intrigue of layered on top of it. Ah, sir. Oh, May Silas! I speak with you for a moment? I turn to see Silas approach me from the other side of the hall, a long stri- his long strides carrying him forward quickly. Hello, Silas! What is your facet uh, self up to in this fine afternoon? Silas' brow creases slightly, his expression indicating some degree of concern. Lady Valora came to me just a few minutes ago, seeming quite distressed. She asked to speak with you, but as I did not know your whereabouts, I directed her to your room instead. I'm afraid I opened it using the servant's spare key. I hope it was not too invasive of your privacy, but Lady Valora was very distraught indeed. Okay. Oh, lovely. I suppose Lanais gave her a briefing. Talk about the nightmare vacation. I almost felt sorry for her. Well, as long as you didn't rummage through my underwear drawer, I think I can excuse your invasion of my room. That seems like an action more befitting of Sir Chermont. If I may say so, sir. Are you? Are- Oh my- I know the, like, you know, like, the maids, the servants, they, like, they know things so they see a lot of things, but no one notices them. He's- He's been spying on us, hasn't he? I gave Silas a puzzled look at the mention of an unfamiliar name, and he blinks at me curiously. Sir Franz Chaumont, the nephew of the Peruvian king. I had noticed him following you closely since you arrived, despite oh. his tendency to keep a low profile. He's the nephew of a king? Oh shit! I stare blankly at Silas with a, my jaw gape. Franz is part of a royal family? Uh, I beg your pardon, sir. I only remember his identity due to my age. He made frequent visits to our kingdom along with the Peruvian ambassador, you see. Oh shit! I didn't- you know, I thought he was just some dude, but that makes so much sense why he talks so, you know, uh, uh, his mannerisms are so different compared to like a normal person. Damn! He's royal blood! I'm kinda- I'm kinda curious, like what can we learn? Silas seems to know these things, so I'm gonna ask him. I can't constrain my curiosity any longer. I want to learn the truth behind Franz's secret past, even if it comes even if it comes back to bite me later. I don't know what could possibly achieve, but if he's going to insist on sticking me through the whole celebration, I have a right to be interested in his motives, don't I? Silas, this is important. What else do you know about Franz? Why is he here? Who is he with? His friends? His enemies? It's like, ah. Uh. <laughs> the butler looks a little taken aback at my not so subtle questioning. But as I soon glimmer with a sly light. I am not privy to Sir Chaumont's secrets, I'm afraid, sir. He seems quite taken with you, however. So perhaps you may have some luck asking him yourself. I slightly grit my teeth together in frustration. Silas has to know more than that, just that. He's not telling me out of consideration of Franz's privacy? However, he has also shown a great interest towards the young lady Celeste. He has consistently eyed her since the celebration started, I believe. 
something suspicious like that's what i always thought celeste was a little bit suspicious even in arden i know she was like helping us but she seems so you know not something's not right with her that perceptive or maybe just nosy butler chuckled a little to himself shaking his head celeste is it i see a strange uncomfortable annoyance hangs in my stomach when i hear silas's words i have to remember Franz's playboy appearance isn't just an act but why does he keep following me around then? Does he think I'll eventually give in to him just because he's tall and charismatic? Well, he's completely out of his mind. I refuse to waste my time on someone like that, regardless of whether he thinks that he has my best interest at heart. I wouldn't be surprised if he's being strangled if he's been stringing me along with lies all this time just for amusement's sake, to be quite honest. Your face has grown rather flushed, sir. Do you require a visit to the <laughs> We're okay. No, no, nothing like that. I'm fine. I'll go into my room now, I think. But thank you for your help, Silas. Of course, sir. Should you need anything, please do not hesitate to request my services. Interesting. I never thought that France would be royalty. That's interesting. I offer a slow nod to the butler before turning towards the stair, closing my eyes with the long exile. I hardly know what to think anymore. Father, how on earth did you survive playing a game like this for 30 years? All this information, misinformation, and conspiracies... It's as if I'm a pawn on a board where I can't see more than this one step ahead. Maybe I should give her the aristocracy and become a monk instead. <laughs> Mumbling to myself, I return to my room with heavy steps, all but dragging my feet as I head down the corridors. On my way, I pass a happily chattering couple, probably on their way down to the festival. I can't wait until the masquerade ball! <laughs> oh dear. Are you going to romance me like a mysterious stranger, Gerard? Of course, love. Even in a sea of masks, I have eyes only for you. I cast the cooping pair in a sour glance, but they're too enraptured with one another to even notice me. Disgusting love birds. I bet he's probably cheating on the girl with her sister or something. Oh my god, Rivian! <laughs> Fishing out the key, I unlock the door to my room, step aside, about to lead out a heavy sigh of relief. Isn't your Rivian, aunt there? Why in the god's name did you not tell me about this last night? What? Oh, I forgot about my uninvited guest. I suppose I should have known that she'd be a bit testy over me not giving her all the details earlier. Valora, who had been primarily sitting on a chair by the fireplace, quickly pushes up to her feet and storms over to me. Uh, apologize, Aunt Valora. I just wasn't sure if the Inquisitor was alright with me leaking any sensitive information, you know. Leaking? You know as well as I do that I was to be informed regardless. I've been running around trying to patch up this crisis all morning while you were out goofing around. Well, that's just not fair, is it? She's the one who's the foreign advisor. What the hell do I have to do with it? Uh, actually, I was looking into more details about the murder for my own, uh, private investigation, so to speak. Oh, really? Well, what did you find out? The King's men are investigating as well, but if no culprit is discovered, things will surely end in a crisis. I can't help but blink a little at her serious questioning. I was expecting her to blow off my investigation considering how unqualified I am, but maybe she has more of enough fair, uh, faith in father to extend to me a little as well. Although I can't help but wonder if that's more of a, ba a bad thing than a good one. Not a great deal, unfortunately. I did glean at one of the witnesses trying to protect some woman, and one of the maids was seen acting suspiciously close at the time of the murder, however. One of the maids? Are you sure about that? I'll have them rounded up and questioned immediately. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Let's not do be too hasty. Could I not question the girl myself a bit? I don't think we should rush to conclusions, you know? Valora gives me a flat, stern glare, her eyes filled with skeptical glint. This is a diplomatic disaster, Rivian. If a culprit mm -hmm. is not found and punished, we will never be able to repair relations with Proevia. Oh... Oh, did she just say the ambassador was from Peruvia? Oh my god, so it was one of his people. No wonder Franz is so into this. No wonder Franz has been so invested in all of this as a part of the Peruvian royal family. More importantly, I suspect something very sinister is at work here. This incident reminds me of something that happened years ago. Something that involved a group intent on plunging the continent into chaos. The chilliness in Valora's eyes almost makes me shiver. She looks deadly serious, and I sense an ominous undercurrent in her words. 
An underground cult known as yeah. the Disciples of Ignatius has been plaguing our government for some time now. They work to destabilize authority, and though we don't know what their true aim is, they are dangerously skilled at what they do. You think one of their members killed the ambassador then? Do you think that they'll try to strike again? Her lips pressed together tightly as she lowered her voice a little. I suspect they will. And for your own sake, you had best stop interacting with foreigners at this gathering any more than necessary. We can barely trust those inside our own borders at present, and anything you do may be turned against you. I swallow, averting my gaze a little uneasily. Now that I think about it, Lenai has probably co complained to her about Franz's appearance last night, and I'm sure she knows who he is. Yeah, oh, that's probably why, aside from the fact that Lenai is jealous, um, I'm, that's probably why he's so wary of Franz, because he knows who he is. Valora watches me keenly for a moment, and somehow I glimpse the same determination in her expression that I've been often seen in Father's face. Soon, though, she sighs and smooths her clothes a little, taking a few steps towards the door. Now I'm going to see about this questioning of the maids. We are sorely lacking in evidence, so I intend to hunt down every bloody clue that I can find. Inform Linnaeus should anything else come to light, Rivian. And make sure not to blemish your father's name by getting caught up in anything else unsavory. The last thing your family needs is a scandal. With that flipping comment, the old woman offers a sigh before leaving my room, slamming the door behind her. Old bat! With a mixture of anxiety and anger, I fold my arms over my chest and pace around the chamber. Franz, could he really be involved in this way deeper than I know of? I'm starting to wonder what else he hasn't told me. And if he knows these disciples, or if he even could be one of them. Okay guys, we're gonna end the episode right here. So, at least we learned something new about Franz, like who his identity is. He, he's the nephew to the royal family, like the Peruvian king. So that's really interesting, and that explains why he's so interested in like, something is gonna happen. And the murder uh, person was actually the ambassador from his kingdom. So that explains why he's so interested in this. And I get the feeling... Celeste is involved, but also that kid Alistair is protecting her because he seems so suspicious to me. I don't know. It just it just seems like his place in all this is a little bit odd. But uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Anyway, thank you once again to Arjun Games for sending me a game key to play their game. And if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to join the companions. And if you would like to help support the channel on Patreon, the link is in the description. Also, you can support the channel for free with gawkbox.com slash a girl and a game. All you have to do is make an account, open it up on your mobile, download the games on my page, and play them. And you will donate real money to the channel, which will help me continue this series and continue the channel overall. Uh, yeah, this is getting interesting. I still like the flirting that Franz is doing, but it just, it's just everything, once again, is not what it seems. Like what Silas said uh, in Arden's route. I think the same thing applies here, too. So it's probably something I'm not expecting. Um, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! For the termite where you run off to all this time. Yep. Please don't be mad. I don't know where he is. I mean it! Forward ...or develop another character. Video game deaths can be tragic. Here are six sad character deaths from video games. Roman, Grand Theft Auto 4.